Hi, this is Emily from War Paint, and you're listening to Days and Mays on Hub Radio. Hello out there, this is Daisy from Days and Mays on Hub Radio, and I'm joined by Emily from War Paint. Hello! Hello! Love is to die! Love is to not die! So tonight is the last in your UK run of shows. You played up in the land of the Yellow Submarine in Liverpool last night. How's the tour been going? Really nice. Um, yeah, really nice audiences, people really getting into it. It's been fun. Cool. I was looking at your tour schedule earlier and it's safe to say you're pretty busy ladies over the next few months. Do you prefer playing out live or do you prefer it when you're just writing and recording all of the music? They all have their um, wonderful qualities. I like being on the road. I, right now we're about we're at the end of a seven-week tour, which is really extreme. Um, yeah, but but being in the stu- I mean, writing is really really fun. You know, especially when you're not in the when you're not in the studio and you're not on the road, but you're just writing. That's like a really free time. Cool. Uh, so for recording this album, it's been documented that you went out to Joshua Tree to record it. How did that come about and what was the process like out there? So we, we toured The Fool for a long time. We actually started touring before we even finished The, finished the Fool. And so by the time um, we finished that tour, it, was, oh, it had been over two years and like 300 shows or something. So... Yeah, so we took a, a, a really short break, like two months maybe, maybe a little bit less. And um, so when the idea came up, you know, we just go back in the studio and start writing in our practice space, which is in L.A. It just seemed kind of, I don't know, it just seemed like going back and just doing the same kind of cycle. And so going to Joshua Tree just seemed like a nice way to create some space, go somewhere that kind of felt like a vacation, just be alone with each other. and and kind of reinvent everything instead of, you know, you want to kind of break it up. Yeah, I've seen some pictures and it looks really, really beautiful. It's still one of my favorite, one of my favorite memories. Do you think that your surrounding and setting when you're writing music, do you think that is quite important? I do. Um, I wouldn't say that all of us necessarily think that. I think some of us really like the organized structure of just, you know, being in our practice space and going to work kind of, you know, having a schedule like that. I like to kind of put it together with, um, yeah, create an environment and experience something that feels um, really unique and um, fresh. That, for me, pulls a lot of new ideas out. So the new album is self-titled, it's called War Paint. If you were to describe it in one word, what would you say? Um, red. <laughs> you do have a bit of a red theme actually in some of your songs, like uh, okay, Crimson, Burgundy. Burgundy yeah. <laughs> I guess this album for me, especially after being in Joshua Tree and the way that a lot of the songs are written late at night in this environment, it just had kind of a like a glowing, a glowing reddish paint coming out of black visual representation for me. I have a lot of visuals that come along with our music, so I usually see colors and that's my best way to describe it. Nice. So speaking of the visuals, you have some really special music videos. I think my favorite has still got to be the video that you guys did for Stars. And I read that the British filmmaker, Chris Cunningham, has recorded a lot of the making of this record. When will we get to see that? Um, well, he's kind of started releasing little bits. He released that teaser, and then the Love Is To Die video has some of that. Um, but he's, I think the plan is, it keeps kind of shifting around, um, but I think the idea is that he's going to release like vignettes and little sections along with these remixes that he's been doing of the music. Because he came to, jo- he started when we went to Joshua Tree because he's married to Jen, so he came as well, and I think he just used it as an opportunity to just... He is so creative and visual that he he saw a chance and it's been really great for us because he's got such a great aesthetic. Amazing. I'm really excited to watch that when it comes out. 
Um, but going back on the one word question, if I was to describe the album in one word, I think I'd just say that it's totally mesmerising. It really is stunning from start to finish. But the sound on this album's a little bit different. There's a little bit more drum machine in there, more harmonies, and it definitely feels a lot more synthy. What was the reason you decided to go in that direction? Bristol. Just kidding. <laughs> I think that mostly it was um, that same kind of idea. We've been just doing The Fool and doing that tour and a lot of guitars and a lot of the energy of that. Um, when we got to Joshua Tree, I don't even think it was a conscious conversation that we had, but everybody just kind of wanted to try some new things, try a lot of things we hadn't been able to try. Um, we'd never written with Stella, and so there was so many things that had been kind of on the back burner. Everybody's got different synths at home and different instruments. You know, Jen had been singing more on the road, so there was a lot of new things going on in the band, and we just wanted to try, you know, expanding and expanding our repertoire and exploring new dimensions. to ask you about was a picture that I saw of you and King Cruel on a piano. What was that about and will we hear any of that? Actually, yeah, that was a late night, um, the last night of Laneway Festival in Australia and we were, um, I think in that moment I was playing Biggie, our song Biggie, and then he sat down next to me and started playing Eric Satie. So we were just, and then we were doing a little jam but we were just uh, fucking around. <laughs> yeah, he's quite a funky geezer. Are, are you liking his uh, music that's out at the moment? Yeah, after, I mean, I hadn't really listened. My boyfriend had showed me some of his music and his songs with King, uh, Mount Kimby. Yeah. And um, I really, I really loved it. And yeah, he's got a really cool style and he's just a really cool person. So. We're major, major fans on our show. We actually have a feature as well, which is called Rad vs. Bad, where we take it in turns to bring in a song and then the listeners tell us if they think it's rad or bad. Is there anyone you've been listening to on the tour bus that you'd put forward for it? Um, I guess that's actually what I've been listening to is Mount Kimby and King Cruel as far as new music goes. Um, but in, I've been listening to a lot of D'Angelo and Eurythmics, so they're pretty rad, but everyone knows that. Shouts to Annie Lennox. Um, <laughs> I last saw you guys playing at Bestival and it was an amazing show but from seeing you live there I noticed there's a lot of uh, love and laughter between the band. How do you keep so upbeat while you're touring? I mean we're a family so we go through it all you know it's like a big fiery Latin family <laughs> um, but I think that we are we become I don't know, after you spend so much time and you go through times that aren't as easy, you kind of have to take responsibility and figure out how to make yourself happy. And I think we're good at just letting things go and just trying to enjoy enjoy the ride, essentially. And also, um, you know, laughter is really the best thing ever. So just try to get a lot of that in there. For sure. So will we be seeing you back here in the summer for any more festivals? Do you know? Um, yeah, we're playing quite a few of them. I think we're playing Glastonbury and Reading Leeds. I think those are all announced. I don't think Glastonbury's announced, but we did it, announce it on Zane Lowe on accident the other night, so I think I can say it. I think that was the best interview I've heard of all time. The <laughs> Zane Lowe interview. It was flipping hilarious. That was ridiculous. It was especially funny. I had no idea we were recording, so I was just <laughs> saying whatever. He is such a legend. He's insane. Well, we look forward to seeing you back here in the summer. Have an absolutely amazing show tonight. Emily Cacal, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.